Hey Bridge City, Good welcome morning. to our online worship experience. We are so glad that you're here. Yes. My name is Becca. And I'm Lauren. And we're both from the Murraysville location. We are. So Good exciting. morning. We're glad you're here with us this morning. And if you're new here, we're so excited for you. If you could just click the new here button and we would love to give you a Starbucks gift card. Could you get excited about a free Starbucks Absolutely. gift card? Yay, if it's free, it's for me, right? So welcome. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. Lauren, what is your favorite Starbucks drink? Ooh. Oh, uh, I like uh, vanilla chai latte. Okay. Yeah, how Is about that you? on the menu? I think so. I think so. How about you? Yeah. I go with an iced latte and coconut milk. Ooh, yum. Yeah. Good. Exciting. So, Lauren. Yes. After Memorial Day, I feel like it's the official kickoff for summer. Yes. Yeah? Yeah! Any plans this summer? I am going to the beach. I am going to the beach. I'm going to Virginia Beach, and I'm super thrilled about that. And I know you've got something that you're really excited about coming up right around the corner. That's right. It is our very own Pittsburgh mission trip here at Bridge City Church. Awesome. Now, I have to be honest, I've never been on a missions trip, and I know some of you watching may be feeling the same way. So what would you say to someone who's never done it before who might be just a little bit nervous about it? Yeah, I think it's just a great opportunity to go out with um, the people in the church and just be a vessel to the Lord and allow the obedience that you have and the love that you have for the Lord just to shine through you in the broken areas that we see in this world today. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. We're getting ready now to start with our time of worship and I'm so excited about that. And I just wanna encourage you to worship differently today. You might be in your living room, you might be in your bedroom, you might be somewhere else, but it's just, it's, it's just all about being in the presence of Jesus today. And so I just encourage you to stand up, crank the TV up, crank the sound up, and just worship um, just as if you were in church there this morning. So, um, Becca, would you pray us into worship? Absolutely. Thanks. Lord God, thank you so much for this opportunity for us to worship you today. Yes, God, I thank you Jesus. for the ability for us to just worship you in the comfort of our own home or yes, through God. our cell phone. And thank yes, you for Jesus. the technology that we have today. Yes, thank you for the production team that went forth today and yes, just God. that provided us with um, this amazing time. Lord, I just ask you to, to help us be in that posture that Lauren was talking about, to receive your love. And I just pray that, that we give you all the honor and glory. Amen. Hey Bridge City, we're so excited you're here with us today. Won't you join us as we worship together? Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great. Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Yeah. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Yeah, you've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forever have done great things, and I know you will do it again, for your promise is yes and amen, you will do great things, God you do great things, yeah, oh hero of heaven, you conquer i 
so much for who you are and all you do. Seated in the heavenly. 
comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles stop breaking out. I have the authority. has given me when I lift my voice and shout every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I'm seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who is conquered. Now let's get ready to continue our worship experience with our tithes and offerings. Yes, and you know, God asks us to be cheerful, joyful givers. And so let's just, today, let's get excited that we get to give. We don't have to give, we get to give. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we get to give today, God. We know that you can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ask, think, or imagine. And God, just allow us today to just trust you, to trust you in our giving, and to be excited to give today, knowing that you're in control. So God, we thank you, and we ask all of this in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Hey church, so good to be with you once again. Here we are with part three of Renewed. I had an experience just recently. I was trying to access our church's website so I could listen to some messages and download some content. The problem was, is no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get into the website. I couldn't listen to the messages. And so finally, well, I broke down and I asked somebody for help. That's right, I asked my son for help. It only took him about 90 seconds. He handed the phone back to me. He says, Dad, you're using the wrong app to access the content and get to the website. Well, here I was uh, blaming everybody. I was blaming the website, the person who uh, made the website happen. I was uh, blaming my phone, the person who designed my phone. I was blaming everybody because after all, I was the victim. When in reality, I was using the wrong application to try to get to the content. 
This is what so many of us do in our relationship with God. We're trying to access the content of who God is and who are we to God, but we're using the wrong app. We have a perception about God. We have a perception about ourselves that it's everybody else's fault, when in reality, it's an internal issue of how we view God. That is what we're communicating in this whole series about being renewed. Our scripture that we're going to launch from is found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on, put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. That's right, I was created to be like God, righteous and holy with a new nature, but my attitude and my thoughts are what needs to be renewed. That's right, renewed, a sanctified reasoning, a new level of, uh, of a reality, of a comprehension. The problem is, is that what, what's the problem with our relationship with God is that we have our thoughts and our attitudes from the way we used to think, and this is what needs to be renewed. So this is what I want to help you with today. I want to help you uncover and overcome some perceptions and attitudes that you have within yourself and within myself that what's preventing us from relating to God. That's right. There's two questions, two questions that affect every decision we make in life. Who is God, your theology, and who are you, your identity? And if we can get renewed, which how are we renewed? We have to reveal, remove, and replace our old attitudes and mindsets with the new nature God has given us. This is what I want to help you with today. So we're going to go to three verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, which are going to help you. And listen, when I say that these are going to help you, I mean, if you'll put in the work of, of, of understanding these verses, if you'll put in the work of understanding what this means, and you'll begin to do what I'm trying to get you to do, you are going to experience breakthrough in your relationship with God like never before. How can I be so bold? Because 16 years ago, I went on a journey. And this, what I'm communicating to you, changed me from the inside out. That's right, it changed and rocked my life completely and fully. And what God did for me, I know he can do for you. As a matter of fact, I believe that one of the main reasons people drop out of the race, they stop being followers of God, and they stop uh, learning about Jesus and becoming God's best and experiencing God's best is because they don't understand what I'm about to communicate with you. This can change change your life if you'll put the work in. I know you're up to the task. Let's jump in here. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. Now, Paul is defending his apostolic authority. People weren't responding to him. And so listen to how he communicates this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, I am going to begin right here, breaking down verse 4 for you, just looking at the words here. Pulling down means destruction, demolish. That means right. we're going to pull down these things, tear them down. Strongholds. Strongholds really are a castle or a fortress. It's a place to have and to hold safely. It's a place to rule from. That's really what this is. Um, it's a place that you can hide out. A stronghold typically is in a place where the king would go to be safe. That means it was a high place in the middle of the castle that the king would go to be completely protected. Now, Originally, I believe strongholds can be a good thing, but I believe when we have the wrong attitudes and thoughts and mindsets, they become a very unhealthy thing, a, a, a thing that, that, that hinders us from growing in Christ. Some translations call strongholds, now listen to this, pretensions, speculations, lofty opinions, high things, imaginations, thought patterns and processes, 
and human reasoning. That's right. That's what strongholds are. It can be human reasoning. And I want to tell you, at Bridge City Church, we're not just about to make you a better you through human reasoning. We want to be completely new-natured you and me. We want to be completely new from the inside out, created to be righteous and holy the way God's created us to be. But this is going to take a whole new mindset, a whole new way to think here. Now, so the stronghold it becomes a safe place. I'm going to come back to that in just a little bit. Two things, according to verse 4, that we need to demolish strongholds. Number one, our weapons, mighty in God, divinely powered. That's right. We need divine empowerment to tear these down. Number one. Number two is we have to take personal responsibility. That's right. As long as you're a victim, you'll never, never make progress. Listen, you can make excuses or make progress, but you'll never make both. You got to decide what you're going to be. And I, and I know many times in my life, I had to choose not to be the victim. I have to choose to be the victor through Christ. Because strongholds will not tear themselves down on their own. See, thoughts turn into imaginations, which turn into arguments, which turn into strongholds, which therefore produce my behavior. Let me say this for you again. My thoughts can sometimes become imaginations, which become arguments... Okay, which become strongholds, which then dictate my behavior. And then they become an idol that separates me from God. Let's look at verse 5. Verse 5, casting down, pulling down. This is what we're supposed to do. Pull down these strongholds that are separating us from God. These imaginations, these speculations, this human reasoning, this barrier. There's a barrier between us and God that prevents us from knowing and experiencing God the way He designed and created us to do. Our thoughts are our perceptions. That's right. It's a personal verdict in our mind about who we are, about who God is. God has given us divine weapons to pull down and destroy the barriers that separate us from God. And we're to take them captive. That's right, take thoughts captive. This concept of taking thoughts captive literally means to be led by the spear. Now, typically, in, in the days of, that the Bible was written, when Paul was writing, soldiers would keep would, would, would keep captives, the, the, the people that were captives, their prisoners, at its spear length. And they would lead them with the spear to keep them moving in the direction they wanted them to go. Our modern day illustration of this would be, is when you're handcuffed. Now, when the police arrest you, they don't handcuff you in the front. Because you can still move your arms. There's no way that they can direct your behavior. What they do is they handcuff you in the back. Why do they do that? Because when you have both hands in the back, what happens is if they can hold that chain in between your two wrists, they can lead you any way they want you to go with, mi with very minimal effort. This is what happens with our thoughts and our attitudes that are leading and guiding us. They are taking us captive and they're leading us around with very minimal effort. When in reality, we need to be taking them captive and telling our thoughts where to go, tell our attitudes where to go, tell our mindsets where to go. I'm telling you, this is so vitally important to our lives. Every aspect of our life is affected by this. Our relationships at home, at work, in the community. It affects the way you handle money. It affects the way you handle your time. It affects the, the, the way you steward your own home. This affects everything. So what happens, and what Paul was trying to say is, we need to take our thoughts captive, but lead our thoughts, not be led by them. So, first of all, what we have to do is admit that we have some strongholds. We need to just flat out admit we have them. Listen, we all have them. I have them. I, we, we, we all got one. And, and, and some of us even have two or three. So to say that you don't have them it would be to live in deception. Now, admitting you have it doesn't, doesn't say that you're just accepting that you can't change. 
What it's doing is admitting that the, the devil has been up to something in your life and we want to reveal that. That's what we want to do. See, if we can change your thinking, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. That's right, your, your, your thought patterns today are a result of what you did yesterday. And you cannot defeat an enemy you can't define. So the goal in, in, in revealing them is so that we can define them, so we can defeat them, not accept them, not just repurpose them. That's not the goal of what we're doing here. Listen, I want to explain to you how this works in my life and how it worked. Now, I've been at this now in, in this concept of teaching. As a matter of fact, if you give me one, one thing to teach, one thing to teach the rest of my life, I'm going to help people understand this because it's going to unlock who God is in their life. Faith will be released in their life. That's why it's so important. 16 years ago, I was in the midst of a crisis, a marriage crisis. I was in a marriage, uh, my own marriage was in crisis. Our church was in crisis. My life was in crisis. And what I, did, what I was doing in my life is I was treating everybody else like they were the problem, and I, I was treating everybody like they were the enemy rather than identifying the enemy. What was my true enemy? I'm going to tell you what it was. It was insecurity and illegitimacy. That's right, insecurity and illegitimacy. That's what this was. That's what was ruling my life. And what it became is it became the foundation in which everything in my life began to unravel because I was being ruled by this. Let me explain to you how this was ru ru ruling in my life. Number one, I grew up in Pittsburgh, a blue collar town where you work hard and you, you work hard for everything that you have. That became some baggage that I carried around. Here we go. Uh, I also... I was, the, I was the youngest of four boys, and I wasn't the brightest of the bunch. I didn't get the best grades, never really applied myself because I just figured, well, I was just, uh, that was just me. I had a brother that was very studious, one that could fix anything, one that was most friendly. I just fought to, fought to fit in. Not only that, many, many times in my life, what happened, the baggage that I started to carry in my life, I was told over and over and over again, you will not succeed. You will not amount to anything. You're going to fail. I was told this by, by elementary school teachers, high school teachers, and in college as well. You'll never succeed. You'll never make it. You can't. You won't. What happened was, is over and over and over, these became the baggage in my life. That's right, all the baggage in my life began to mount up in front of me. Over and over and over again. So I began, I began to compete with other people rather than destroy the strongholds that were in my life, blocking my way with God. Over and over and over again, these things began to mount up and began to separate me. They began to almost they, they create a safe place for me. And that's right, even things in my life from my childhood, even things from childhood began to mount up and become part of this stronghold that just prevented me from being free. See, these baggage that we all have in our life create a safe place that we run into. And, and, and we create a safe place that, that protects me from other people. And if we are not careful, the things that we once removed will come back on us if we don't continue to be free from these things. This is why this is so vitally important here. Illegitimacy, a lie, insecurity, a deception. And so I constantly had to pull people down. I constantly had to work hard. Do you know what mine basically was? I was a servant trying to earn my favor with God as a son rather than realizing I'm a child of God. I'm a son who serves. Totally, totally different. So, these, so what happened was is I was fighting the wrong battles. I want to tell you today, your spouse is not your enemy. Your boss is not your enemy. Your bank account is not your enemy. The car you drive is not your enemy. You, listen, your pastor is not your enemy. 
Your church is not your enemy. We need to identify the enemy and say, this is the enemy that's the barrier. It's in my thoughts and it's my mind. And so I perceive everything through my baggage. That's right, my baggage from from being young to, to where I am right now. And we need to remove these things and completely destroy them and then keep replacing them with the right thing. I, I hope this is, this is bringing light and life to you, even now. So I want to make it really clear, what is our divine weapon that God has given us? In Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God, then God, then God made you alive in Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about that. See, God made me alive in Christ, but I still had baggage I had to identify and remove. I had to reveal it and remove it and replace it. And I'm constantly being renewed in my mind. He canceled the record, verse 14 states, of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it on the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly publicly by his victory over them on the cross. That's right. My power is the cross of Jesus Christ. That's the divine weapon that I use. It's not human reasoning. It's not just a better thought process. It's a godly thought process. Listen, when people come to me and say, wow, you're a follower of Jesus. It sounds like you're, you're brainwashed. It's like, thank God, my brain needed washed. I don't know about yours, but mine did and it still does because I have an old nature that's contrary to God, that's warring against this new nature of God that I've been designed to be righteous and holy, renewed attitudes and thoughts. But this baggage separates me from you. It separates me in my relationships. It separates me from God. It separates me from my destiny. I want God's best in my life. And I want God's best for your life. So admitting you have an issue isn't accepting it. It's divine power. You know, you never get to a place in your life where you don't have to deal with these things. Just this week, I had a situation where I was feeling so dishonored. I mean, I felt dishonored. I felt put down. I, I felt insecure. And, and it, it, the situation was real. It was a real situation that happened. And my feelings, notice how I say that, were very, very real. Okay? But what I had to do, rather than lash out in insecurity, rather than lash out in illegitimacy and protect myself, I took a step back. I had to take a step back and say, wait a minute. This is a lie and a deception. I am a man of God. I have character and I have integrity. I am a child of God. This is what defines me. And then God took me to Psalm 15 about who will abide in the sanctuary with God. And when I went to Psalm 15, I began to realize this defines my life. This situation that caused dishonor to me and really, really did offend me, I had to deal with internally or the, or the wrong thing was going to come out on, on the outside. I don't know about you, but I realize I still have buttons that get hit in my life. And whenever you have a button that gets hit and you have a reaction, that's a sign God's at work. That's a sign God wants to do something inside of you. That's a sign that God is, is producing something holy and righteous in you and wants to reveal something with you. That's what I came to the realization. My situation didn't change, but I changed. My attitude and my thoughts changed. And I didn't even go up and speak up for myself. And you say, Pastor, why didn't you just speak up for yourself and defend yourself? You know what? I'm going to let God do my defense for me. I don't need to do that in this situation. I just felt like I don't need to speak up. I need to allow it just to be God here. I need to be vigilant and militant to make sure that I continue to walk in freedom. That I continue to not allow this stronghold all these strongholds, all these situations in my life to creep back in. Because, see, this is what needs to happen. 
What needs to happen is I got to unpack these bags. I got to unpack these things in my life and reveal them so that I can remove them. By the divine power of God, I do not have to allow everything that was communicated about me. You're a failure. You're not good enough. You'll never amount to anything. No, that was written against me, and I do not need to do that. I need to take that off of this barrier and throw it aside. I need to remove it in my life. I can take situations in my life where I have failed and failed miserably and I didn't feel like God was there for me. Say, no, that's not true. God is for me. I'm going to take that and I'm going to remove it out of my life and completely get rid of it. I need to get rid of these barriers in my life just like you do. So how do we replace mindsets? See, once you, once you reveal them, Okay, and then you begin to remove them by your divine power, then you have to replace them. I want to give you three things, three things to help you replace these mindsets. Number one is you need the word of God, the word of God. Yes, even Jesus, I believe, was attacked by the devil trying to hit a scheme of illegitimacy in his life. That's what we see with, with the temptations in the wilderness. So vitally important. How did Jesus face it? With the word of God. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Come on. The word of God. Number two, we need to war, war out loud. That's right. We have to say, we have to declare it out loud, the word of God. And number three, we need to do this with somebody. That's right. We need to do this with somebody. Working with somebody is so vitally important. This situation that just happened to me this week, as I began to share this with somebody else, I began to get free because they were able to speak to me in a redemptive manner according to who I am in Christ. So vitally important. So here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. You, you, if, for those of you that have been following us the last couple weeks, we used this card a couple weeks ago. We're going to use it again today. That's right. There's nothing, nothing magical about this card, but it's just a simple card that communicates who we are in Christ. What we need to do is we need to realize to be renewed, I have to reveal, remove, and replace. I need to have the Word of God. I need to war out loud. Come on, I need to do it with somebody. Get with somebody. Communicate with somebody. Share your stuff with somebody. Being transparent and vulnerable and watch what God will do in your life. So you're going to write down the lie. You're going to write down that lie. You're, 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 you're no honor in your life. Nobody respects you. Nobody, nobody will ever honor you. No, 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 no. Romans chapter 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. God has not given me a spirit of fear, which I am a slave. God has given me the spirit, which I cry out, Abba, Father. He's a father to me, and I'm his child. Nobody can ever change that. So my declaration, I am a man of God with integrity and character. I am. I am a good husband. I am able to nurture and care for my wife. I am able to love her. I'm able to protect her. See, these are my declarations that I'm doing on a regular basis. I'm telling you, it works. You got to, got to get a hold of this. If you'll do this on a regular basis, I'm talking day in and day out. I'm telling you, you will begin to replace the attitudes and thoughts that you did have with God, God's nature, the way he created you to be. And you can tear down these barriers and be free to be who you are in Christ Jesus. That's who he's created you to be. That's who he's created me to be. This works, church. I'm begging you to do it. What I want to do right now as I close, I want to give you 10 of the most common strongholds Again, imaginations, arguments, and these all become idols in our life because an idol is anything that comes in between you and God. When I realized these situations that happened to me, and some of them by me, they don't define me, they refine me into who I am in Christ. That's right, they are no longer going to define my life or pend in my life or create a barrier in my life. I am going to get rid of these things and replace them. So I want to help you give a, a lie and then a truth for each of these. And here they are, illegitimacy. And I'm going to give you a scripture, Romans chapter 8, 14 and 15. That's what I quote all the time. How about rejection? 
rejection. And there's a verse there, Exodus 19. And many people have suffered so much rejection in their life. Their perception, they're looking to be rejected all the time. How about abandonment? Maybe you were abandoned in your life by friends. Maybe you're abandoned by family or a father or a mother. You don't have to live with that abandonment all your life. You can be free. Hopelessness, worthlessness. These are some of the common traps and schemes that we have. We can replace them with the Word of God, warring out loud with other people, helping us get free and stay free. Our identity, our immorality. Many people, because of immorality in their life, because of sexual experiences in their life, they identify different ways, and that's a key word right now in our culture. But we don't have to identify with what happened to us or by feelings. We, as believers in Jesus Christ, we identify with who Jesus Christ is and who he created us to be. That's our our true identity. It's not based on how I feel today. It's based on the truth of the word of God, what God says about me and who I am to him. And with this, and this is, this is a verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And such were some of you. Some of you were in immorality. Some of you were in homosexuality. Some of you were in adultery. Such were some of you. That is not who you are right now. That is not who God sees you to be. You were that, but now you're the righteousness of God. You don't have to go on sinning. You can be free. Or rebellion. Some people just have a spirit of rebellion. And some fear, fear that's just gripping them, fear that's ruling them. And this is a mental, uh, I I hate to use the word mental illness, it's a mental mindset that fear is gripping their lives right now. You don't have to live with fear when you you have Jesus Christ. That's so vital and unforgiveness. Some people just have so much unforgiveness in their life. These 10 things are common strongholds, mindsets, speculations, arguments, imaginations that are in our mind. Our thoughts, come on, they move to imaginations and arguments that create strongholds which dictate our behavior. You can break that cycle with the Word of God. And that's why with each one of these, we gave you a verse. That's right, we gave you a verse that that you can combat these out loud with the Word of God, making declarations of who we are in Christ. I'm telling you, if you will do this this week, you are going to see such a remarkable change in your life. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow you away, the change that you see in your attitude and thoughts, but it's not one and done. You have to continually do it. I've been a follower of Jesus, listen, a lot of years. It's, 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 it's over 40 years as a follower of Jesus. And I am still making sure that none of these barriers are controlling my life. I don't want to be controlled by anything else except for Jesus Christ and Him and He alone. That's why why I'm doing this and that's why I'm doing it for you. Will you put this into practice? Will you begin to write down the lie, the truth, and the declaration? Will you do this this week? Will you do it today? Will you share it with somebody else? If you do, you're going to be again, being led by the Spirit, renewed in your attitude and your thoughts. Before I close, I want to offer something to you today. More than just a good teaching, I want to offer you a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right, the first lie that we have to, we have to combat to become followers of Jesus is maybe you're not good enough or you have to earn it or you, uh, you're, you're not good enough or you haven't earned it or there's a, that you, can, you can let your good works get you into heaven. Your good works aren't going to get you into heaven. Your good works aren't going to get you a relationship with Jesus. Jesus Christ made a way. He made the way for you to have a connection with God and experience Him the way you were designed and created to be experiencing God's best so vital. I want to offer you a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you not only to admit that you've missed it, you've sinned, you you screwed up, you've missed the mark. I want you to receive the forgiveness that Jesus offers us on the cross. The only way to heaven is by what Jesus Christ has already done for you. That's right, receive his forgiveness. Next, I want you to trade places with Jesus and let him 
be in charge of your life. Up to now, you were in charge of your life. You called the shots. In some cases, your culture, your family, your background, all these things called the shots. But I'm asking you to relinquish control to Jesus Christ and let him be the leader of your life. If you've never done that before, I want to offer that to you today. This is where it begins where you can begin making good decisions and good choices in your life, not based on human reasoning, not based on our culture, not based on what you think or your, only your parents think. It's based on what, who God is and who you are to God. If that's you right now, there's a simple prayer. There's no special words that get you a relationship with Jesus. It's a heart that says, I want to change my direction. I was heading my own way. Now I'm going to, I'm going to do things God's way. That's the way I want to do it, with a new mindset, with a new heart, and with a new nature. And if that's you right now, you can just pray this simple prayer. Say, Father God. Say it out loud. Father God, I have sinned. I have messed up and missed the mark. Forgive me for all my sin. And then thank Jesus. I thank you, God, for forgiving me. Say it out loud. Say, Jesus, be the leader of my life. I relinquish control completely to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you let us know so we can pray for you? We can help you take your next steps with God so that we can help you remove all the barriers in your life because at Bridge City Church, that's what we do. We help people remove their barriers so that their relationship with God can be free. And their relationship with God can be everything that God's destined you to be God's best. That's who we are. That's what we do at Bridge City Church. Hey, thanks so much for being with me. Look forward to next week, part four, and how we can be offensive in replacing our thoughts and attitudes with God's. Have a great and an awesome week. We have been so expectant for the Lord to move throughout this Renew series. If you by chance happen to make Jesus the forgiver of your past and the leader to your future, please click the link below. Yay, and if you did or if you rededicated today, welcome home. We're so excited for you. And click the link that says, I wanna know Jesus because there are people that want to pray for you and celebrate with you. Um, And just what a great day. So thank you so much for tuning in. Becca, thanks for being here today. So much fun having you and have a blessed week, everyone. Bye.